so here the first thing is go ahead and create a file system and it is going to ask you which VPC if you have an older account multiple VPCs will be there if you are in production you're going to choose the production one for a demo you can go ahead and quite easily choose the default one which solves a lot of problems with security groups and subnets because that is all pre done for you so here in Virginia as you can see here there are six availability zones all the way from 1A to 1F so if you check all these marks that means that my mount point is going to get created on all these availability zones let us say i don't want in all of them i just want it in let us say 1a 1c and then let us say 1e i just want to skip one of them and it is giving me a choice of if there are multiple subnets it will give me a choice here which subnet i want to give and then if you want your uh, EFS to be available only in a particular IP address. You don't want that IP address to change Then you can go ahead and hard code your IP address in this place uh, Assuming you know that uh, what IP address is configured here um, But this is again for more secure configurations You can just leave it as default and still it will be working and again make a note of the security group uh, If our EFS ports are not working, we'll go ahead and change this so <clears throat> by default Whatever security group allocated with the subnet will be allowed picked up automatically here and if you want to add some more then you can go ahead and add it but if you're choosing the default VPC this will be picked up for you automatically so go ahead and choose next step and I'm just going to give a name I'm just going to say EFS demo and then I'm just going to say owner then say mystique and then here is the part where I said you can choose your performance of how much performance you need uh, so of course there is a minor changes in cost when you choose this one there's a different cost when you choose this one the provisioned IOPS cost comes into the picture so let us choose default here and you whether you want to enable encryption or not when I choose this Amazon is going to give me all the keys that are in my account which are uh, which can be used with EFS so that is what is listed here and if you want to use uh, encryption key from some other account I need to just mention the AR and ID here if you remember it is Amazon resource number almost every resource that you create in Amazon will have an unique identifier and we can put it here in this case that will be the key ID so let us not do encryption let's just go ahead and build it and it is asking us to review the configuration and click on create file system just a couple of clicks you are done with your file system and once again it is going to take the request and since it is a highly scalable and uh, quite complex configuration is going to take a moment to get it configured it has just taken the request and if I scroll down here and you can see here the lifecycle state is mentioned as creating it is going to do the background processing meanwhile and get it all set up and ready in a few moments meanwhile Amazon also gives you a recommendation if for people who might not be familiar on how to mount an EFS file system uh, there is a set of instructions that are given here if you click on that Amazon will give you the commands that you need to run for mounting your file systems in your Linux machines So as you can see here the commands are given if you are using Amazon Red Hat Linux It just says that you need to run this command to install the NFS utils package and uh, If you are an Ubuntu you need to do this and after then you log into your I mean then you need to log into your other instances go ahead and create the file system and mount it so all we are all I am also going to do is just copy paste these commands after creating my servers so let us go ahead and create three EC2 instances and we'll let us go ahead and connect to them as well when you're creating your instances ensure that you are choosing the same default VPC where you have created your EFS file systems also and uh, Choose the same subnets where your AFS file systems are going to create a mount point. So if you remember, I created for 1A and 1C and 1E. So let us just go ahead and confirm that. So I'm going to start my first server in 1A and I need a public IP address so I can connect to it. So I'm just going to click on that next. So let us go ahead and do that quickly now. Here is another important bit ensure that you're putting the server also into the same security group where your EFS was also created. If you are not sure, just take a note of this number SG group 04 blah 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 and then go here and uh, in your mount point also it will be listed somewhere if not let us go ahead and find it out so here are my three servers server 1a 1c and 1e all of them booting up so let us go ahead and connect to them and uh, we will start installing the packages as recommended by Amazon 
So we have all the three servers up and running and we also have terminal sessions connected to them to ready to execute uh, commands to mount your EFS file system. So let us go back to our EFS and see there. So the, in my status, my EFS says the lifecycle state is available so we can uh, we are good to mount it. And this is the mount point through which I can access my EFS file system. So if you go ahead and click on EC2 mount instructions, Amazon gives you all the commands. And since we are running in Red Hat Linux, I'm going to install these packages in all those terminals now. So let us go ahead and do that. Multi paste. So it is installed. I mean, paste it. I'm just press enter. So it is going to get installed in all of those uh, three servers that we have created server 1A, 1B, and 1C, server 1C and 1E. So let us give it a minute for it to install. Then we will go ahead and do the next one. So two servers have completed, just waiting for the last one. Seems to be a bit slow for some reason. So meanwhile, while the server is uh, getting its packages built and up and running, I'll just go ahead and create the mount points on the other two servers. So we created the mount point and the final step is going ahead and mounting this uh, EFS itself and remember only when your security group is uh, allowing the ports 2049 you will be able to mount it successfully otherwise it is just going to hang there and it's going to wait for the network connection to happen so the other server is almost completed let me just wait for a moment and before that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show df-1h and you see what are the current file systems that are there so you can see here there is no file system at the end so I'm just going to say let me just paste it on this guy alone and create it okay so the final step is going ahead and creating the mount point itself let me clear the screen paste this command Oh, great. I need to do multi paste. Okay, let us do paste. So if I execute this command now, and if my ports are working, it will automatically mount it. And if you're seeing that if our prompt is hanging like this, and it's almost guaranteed that your security group is not allowing the 2049 port, which, has, which is required for NFS to work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to head over to my EC2 dashboard and then go ahead and here where is my security group here it says that default and if you click on view inbound rules it is going to list you what are the rules that are currently available and you can see here the 2049 port is not there so i want to modify this so i'm just going to click on default and it's opening the security groups in another tab and i'm just going to add that as well and if you come to inbound you can see there are two ports only allowed that is port 22 for me to connect and port 80 if there is a web server running uh, so i'm just going to say enough is here and automatically it will pick up the port number so you don't have to know anything and what i'm going to say is this connection is not going to come from outside only all my three servers are going to talk to each other so i'm just going to give the security group id itself so sg so all connections originating from this security group will be allowed. Come on, I'm not able to click on this. Okay, let me type that. 04755F7B and click on save. Come on, for some reason. Okay. I somehow managed to do that. So now that my port is enabled, if I go ahead and try to mount it again, it should work. Oh, multi-part. So here it is, oh, it is pasted in only one server. So I'm just going to paste it in the other two servers as well. So mounted there, third one. So if I do df-h now, I should be see, able to see a new file system now. You can see here at the end, a new file system is created. Let me exit multi-execution. So let us focus on one server at a time. So you can see here, this is the mount point of my file system and its size is of about eight exabytes. 
and it is mounted under the root EFS file system. So I'm just going to go into this file system now. Let me execute it properly. And let us say I'm creating a file. Oh, I'm sorry. Touch file one, two, and three, four. So if I do LSF and L, all these files will be created. And if I go here in my directory two and do LSF and L, I will be able to see all these files. So let us say I want to write something. I'm just writing something to my file one now. And there's only a single line here. So I'm just going to go ahead and execute uh, this one here in the third server now. So go ahead and open the file. You see here the content is available here to be modified. So that is how you bound an EFS file system on different uh, availability zones and access them from different servers and all of them can read and write to the same file system in real time. It's really fast, really scalable and uh, very convenient for distributing content. If you're having any difficulties, let me know. I can help you with that.